Do you realize that anybody who knows how to use Notebook LM along with Gemini 2.5 can now do the work of an entire startup team? Today I want to show you how to use Google's massive updates to these free tools in order to research, build, and promote your ideas. I've spent many hours experimenting with Gemini's new superior coding capabilities and one million token context window to come up with this step-by-step -step process for getting your ideas into the world as fast as possible. You see, while I was running my market marketing agency, we worked exclusively with software companies from unicorn startups all the way to the largest SaaS company in the world. And I've been shocked at how well you can combine these two tools to rival or even exceed the work of some of these top tier teams. Did you know that Sam Altman and his cronies are betting on who's going to create the first single person $1 billion company? After watching this, I think you'll agree that that moment is a lot closer than most people think. So here's the gist of what we're going to get into today. We're going to use Notebook LM, especially Especially its new discover feature to look into the pain points of your particular customer. Then we're going to use it to look into trends in your specific industry. Then we're going to use it to look into competitors in your space. We're going to take all that information and do a smart analysis on it. Then we're going to pass it to Gemini 2.5 to actually build out the software, to build out the marketing website, and to build out the marketing content. And we're also going to look into Firebase as a way that you can really move from an MVP or a prototype that Gemini builds directly into a full-fledged web app that you can sell to, you know, a bunch of people. So it all starts here with our trusty friend, Notebook LM. We're going to fire up a fresh new notebook. I always get excited when uh, I fire up a fresh new notebook. And I get even more excited now that this feature is here. This Discover Sources feature is truly a game changer. I know that word gets thrown around quite a lot, but many of my videos relied on going to perplexity to find sources and then dumping those into Notebook LM. You no longer have to do that. This is a very, very powerful search feature here. And you got to know how to prompt it, though, because like anything, the prompt matters. And for that prompt, I'm jumping right into the cheat sheet. I make a cheat sheet for every single video that I create. These are all immediately accessible to anybody who joins my Patreon. Um, so yeah, check that out. There's a link in the description. Starting with the user's pain point is one way to ensure that your idea is successful. I've seen a lot of software projects go off the rails when it's just something that a founder thought was a great idea but didn't have any valid data to back it up. So we're going to grab this prompt and we're going to dump this right into the discover feature of Notebook LM, asking it to go out and look at where these people are actually voicing their opinions. We're not looking for editorials of what some person thinks about what some other person thinks about. We're looking for the voice of the customer here. And the project I'm working on today is a uh, healthcare app that I've been uh, thinking about. I've recently struggled with some health issues and I've had a lot of trouble understanding my blood lab work, sharing that blood lab work out. I've gotten it in, it exists in multiple places. You know, there's a, a portal here and a portal there. I wanna build a software product that compiles all of the data for my blood work in one place. I think there's a lot of people that could benefit from this, especially if you tack on some AI capabilities of interpreting that and, and letting you know, you know what these tests mean and potentially uh, you know, next steps there. So I'm just saying, find sources on sites such as Reddit, Quora, and niche forums to find user pain points regarding understanding, accessing, and sharing blood work labs and similar healthcare data. Let's just submit that. And the better you prompt this, the more you can just select all of what is in here. Cool, some of these are really awesome. I'm gonna leave that first one out. I don't know that that's exactly what we need, but we're gonna import all of those different sources. Now that all those are in there, I wanna label these. So I'm gonna rename the source, and for all of these, I'm just gonna put user in all caps. Copy and paste that, save. This will allow us to easily find our user data from our industry data from our competitor data. All right, so there is all of our user pain point data. We're going to go back to this discover and back into the cheat sheet here. And I'm going to say gather studies from leading consulting firms and other credible sources on 
you know, exactly what you're looking to do. In this case, it's consumer health care apps. Looking for trends, it exclude anything that was published before 2024. So we're just going to drop this in to find credible resources on industry trends. Going to import those. And these ones I'm going to rename. Just put this label, all caps, trends, in front of them. So we can easily see at a glance our trends from our user info. Trust me, this is going to come in helpful later on when we have a bunch of sources in there. Cool. So we've got all of our trends. We got all of our user. This one didn't come through. So we just remove that. No big deal. And now finally, we want to look for some competitors. And importantly, we don't want to find uh, reviews of these competitors. We're really just looking for their home pages because that's what we really want most from them. So I'm grabbing this prompt here, dropping that right into this discover again, looking for the most successful. Again, you can put in whatever you want here. For me, it's consumer healthcare apps and tracking software. Please return only the home page or the app page of fast growing startups or established market leaders. Ideally, we want a mix of those of the new uh, hot products as well as the ones that are, you know, really dominating the market here. And we're looking for their main links to their main homepages. It does an awesome job of this. So really think about how you steer that prompt. We've got My Fitness Pal, Headspace, and Ovulation Tracker. Perfect. That's an interesting one. Not exactly what I was looking for, but that could be helpful as well that Y Combinator. Let's import these. And I'm going to rename these. I'm going to add the competitor label to these. All right. And just like that, we have a powerful asset here for our startup idea. We've got a bunch of information about our user pain points, trends in the industry, and our competitors. So let's get into how we're going to use this next. First, I want to retitle this Blood Works which is sort of the placeholder name for this app that I'm working on. Okay, so now we're moving on to this step two analysis and strategy. And this first part of it, we're getting back to those pain points, a very simple prompt that just says, please analyze the pain points listed in these sources. We're gonna copy and paste that in, but the key here is make sure only these user sources are selected. So we're gonna select all of our user sources, we're gonna leave everything else unselected, and ask for a pain point summary. And this is exactly what we're looking for. These healthcare systems, electronic records are very frustrating experience, miscommunications between medical professionals and patients. So now we're gonna save this note here. Then you gotta click into the note and convert this to a source. So now we've added that as a source down here and we're going to rename this to keep everything straight. We're gonna rename this source user pain points. So that one jumps right out to us there. So the next step here now that we have those pain points analyzed is to cross-reference those against the industry trends using this prompt. So we're gonna just grab this and in that same exact chat string, we're gonna copy and paste this in right here into the chat string. We're gonna turn all of the user sources off off and these trend sources on. So now we are cross-referencing these trends with the pain points using this prompt that basically says, please return an aggregate of the user trends based on, you know, X, Y, Z, what we're looking into as it relates to the conversation above. Let that run. And here is where those pain points align with the trends here. Beautiful analysis that we can just save as a note. And then once that note is saved, we want to open up that note and convert this to a source so that we can reference it here in the sources. And we'll save that and rename that as our trends summary. So we have the pain points summary. We have the trends as it relates to our pain points summary in here. And now is when things get exciting. We can start mapping the features of our prototype of this software. So now I'm gonna refresh the chat string. I'm gonna select our user pain points and our trend summary. And I'm gonna grab this prompt, copy that right in. This just says, using the selected sources, please outline the key features of an app that addresses the identified concerns here. Awesome, and this does a really detailed job. So what we wanna do is focus it on something that is more of an MVP or a minimum viable product or a prototype that we can start with and build upon. So that's where I use this prompt. That'll simplify 
simplify this down a little bit to something we can wrap our heads around initially. Awesome, this has now simplified that down into some key features for that MVP. And now I'm just gonna follow up with this prompt, which is sort of a meta prompt. It's a prompt asking for a prompt that we can then put into Gemini to start building this app out. I'm asking it to use JavaScript specifically because that's the language that I'm trying to focus on. I have a whole nother video on my path of learning how to code with AI. I'm gonna link to that video now because I think there's some helpful things in there if you really wanna build production ready software. But Let's see what this comes up with. All right, we've got a pretty robust prompt here that we can now go over to Gemini with. So I'm gonna copy this out of Notebook LM. We're hopping over to gemini.google.com. We're gonna drop this right in. Gotta clean up some of this beginning here. And I'm gonna title this Bloodworks. We gotta turn this canvas feature on. We're gonna let that run. And there it goes, building our JavaScript app. And there we have it. This is a working app here. This is the prompt that we entered in. It ran for a while. And I wanna show you a trick if you wanna get even more serious about this. Go to this code, we're gonna select all and moving out of this MVP prototype into a real legit piece of software, we go to Firebase, another Google product. Get started, log in here. And I'm dropping in everything that we created from that working prototype right in here. I'm gonna click run. And then I'm gonna follow it up with this prompt, which just says, here's some code from an app I created. We can use this code as is, because otherwise it kind of assumes that you're grabbing it from somebody else and it wants to reinvent the wheel. So you gotta tell it, no, hey, I built this so we can take it from here and then progress it. Well, just like that, ask it, say, feel free to make any enhancements you want to improve on it. And I like to say, use this shad CN, which is a, anytime you add that in, it's gonna make it look even better. I think that is a uh, tailwind CSS thing that, that makes these web apps look really good. So we'll copy and paste that in and we'll follow that up. Changes I want to make and it's going to go through and start actually improving this and enhancing it in various ways and actually building it from basically one file into a whole set of files. So it's kind of hard to see here. I'll zoom in, but it's now taking really just that what was a one page app and building it out all these different TypeScript files, really turning that into a true code base that then you can edit and start to improve upon just like any other you know software tool out there. And this Firebase Studio is really awesome from moving from a prototype into a legit production ready piece of software. This rivals Cursor and, and others. Um, so something to check out as it all stays within that Google ecosystem. Okay, so we've built the app and now we're going to design this homepage for this app and our Notebook LM Notebook book is going to come super handy in there. Remember all that competitor uh, information that we pulled? We're going to use that now. We're going to grab this prompt. We're going to copy and paste that in. We're going to make sure all the different competitors are turned on here. We want to give it access to these competitor resources now. We're also going to give it access to this MVP prompt so it knows the tool that we're building and it can cross-reference that with all these different competitors' homepages and just saying, hey, craft a prompt for a large language model to generate a visually compelling and effective landing page or home page for this product. So again, that is a meta prompt, a prompt that we're using to create a prompt that we're going to put into Gemini to create the marketing web page. Because, you know, when you go to uh, a new piece of software, you don't go right into the software. You go into a home page that you can then click get started and, you know, access the app that way. So that's what we're going to use to build out next. All right. So that has run and created this landing page prompt. Remember to save it as a note and then save that note as a source. And this is the prompt that we're gonna use that summarizes the tool and all of the language from these other uh, competitors into a prompt that will build our homepage for this thing. Grabbing that, copying and pasting that back into Gemini here. Again, we wanna turn Canvas on and let's start building the marketing website for this product. And we're running here. All right, and there we have our little app here. I wanna change the name here to make sure it says Bloodworks. There we go, and it rocked those icons. I've had trouble with those icons. <laughs> 
before, but this time it did it. So now to publish this app and website to the web, I'm gonna use Replit, it's what I'm most familiar with. You can, again, also use that Firebase option, but I'm just gonna grab this prompt here that uh, will allow us to take what we've already created and drop it into Replit and get it online. So when you open Replit, you're gonna be met with its agent here, and we're, we're just asking it, hey, take the document attached and use this exact code, no need to change anything. I'm simply looking to create a new Replit with this uh, and host it on Replit. So we're adding that prompt in, and then we're grabbing the code from Gemini. So here is the what we created in Gemini, we grab this code, select all copy paste that in start building and it builds it so it's going to ask you to look through a plan this is all there and I, I think you can just approve the plan and start and ideally it won't try to reinvent the wheel but it'll just take that file and help you host it right here and again this is a place just like Firebase where you can then start to improve it and add features and build it more into a full working code base there we go looks awesome now all we got to do is click deploy uh, and there's a few different ways to deal with this auto scale usually works well click 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 keep clicking forward and there you go now we have both the home page here this is live anybody can visit it and we have it connected when you you got to work through this in Replit and just fix the link. When you click get started, it opens the fully hosted app here. So we've got the home page, we got the app all online, all just a few hours of work maximum. Now we got to promote it. All right, so now step five, we're going to move into creating a content strategy for our new startup idea. And this is really what my background is in. I ran a content marketing agency for over 10 years, worked with all sorts of software companies before I really decided to pivot into this new world of AI and I started this blazing zebra channel blazing we got to move fast and zebra we've got to you know identify our own strengths our own passions and bring them to this new world of AI so I hope you subscribe and follow along with these videos as you begin to pivot and transition into your new AI career with some intentionality and ideally it's a more fulfilling career than any that you've had in the past. So for the content strategy, we're going to use this prompt here that just says develop a content marketing strategy outlining four hub pieces of content, each supported by four blog posts that link to those different traffic sources there. And we're going to copy and paste this right back into our notebook LM notebook. For this one, you can pretty much have all of the sources on and see what it comes up with. Awesome. So it's returned already a pretty killer content marketing campaign. And if you've done anything with AI, you probably know how to create a blog post or even a long form piece of content. But I bet you don't know how to create infographics and interactive pieces of content. So that's what I want to show you how to do next. So I'm grabbing this prompt. This is another meta prompt, a prompt that creates a prompt for designing a visually compelling infographic related to one of the hub page ideas that it came up with. Very cool. That is pretty big. We're going to save that as a note, as we always do, and save that, convert that to a source so we have that. I'm going to copy and paste all this right into Gemini, turn on that canvas. I'm also going to supply the code from our main landing page here so that it can follow the brand, um, you know, look and feel that we've already been working on. I'm adding that there. You can also upload it here as a separate file though. So let's let that go and see if we can create that. So here's the result of that infographic here. You can see it follows all of the styles of our previous creations. We can get that online using Replit the same way we got the app and the home page online and we can start to build out our content portal that way but there is so much you can do from here not only infographics but you can create cluster visualizations here's just a peek at what this can do when it comes to creating interactive content i used it to just create an interactive mind map from about all the notebook lm features limitations etc so you can create content like this and get it online copying the code in using that same process i showed you on replit or inside of firebase this cheat sheet is absolutely packed with a ton of good information it goes through everything that we went through here today but then dives even deeper into each step of this process so if building out software and businesses like these is something that you're interested in definitely check out my patreon there's a 
link in the description. You can support this channel, grab this cheat sheet and over 125 others instantly. There's some coaching options in there as well. I've got a video that dives a lot deeper into the strategy portion of what we went over today. So if you're serious about this, check that video out next. Make your dreams come true.